think that after after the bath, after the coating, it will be a good idea to clean it in the ultrasonic, get rid of particles. If you want to get rid of the caustic, but you still, you know, you wash it so good, still you're going to have a caustic, you know, in your uh, embedded. I'm sure, your, both these nano. videos can work. Oh, okay, thank, thank you, Armin. And Rick's camera's working again. It's distorted, guys. Do, do, do you hear very well? Or Armin's pretty quiet, yeah, but that's okay. We can hear him. Here, I... Rick, put your heart back in your chest, man. Rick, you made the heart. My God. <laughs> you find someone? <laughs> Where is the nano coating, man? Hey, that's what's coming up next, actually. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Live real time. I haven't done this yet, so let's see. <laughs> Long time. Uh, uh, just, no, I'm running out of fuel, unfortunately. So that's yeah. the end of that. Oh. You, gotta really, you gotta really watch the color progression. If you miss it, it's junk. Let me try to see if I can find the fuel. I'll be right back. Guys, your audio audio good. I hear I hear very distorted audio, and maybe it's my problem. Uh, everybody's really clear at my end. Mm. I don't know what's going on. Could be your connection. Uh, yeah. So many variables. He's got to have a, a, a tank of propane in that shop of his gas. Where's that big yellow bottle, Rick? <laughs> Fuel and uh, got a butane container, but no adapter for it. Uh, let's see. What can we do? What can you do? Well, I guess we're kind of hooped on that one. Maybe well, he'll come up with it later. Get a bigger hammer. <laughs> okay. Um, Have you sleep, Rick? Say what? Have you sleep? You look tired, man. Oh, I'm always tired because I never get enough sleep. But I'm getting old. Hey, give me a break. No, no, not at all. Once you're, oh, he's 16. Once you're up to Always six 16. decades. Hey, I may have to get old, but I can be immature forever. That's right. <laughs> That's what I figure. Going on 16. Yep. Okay, what else um, we have to uh, show here? Anybody have any coils uh, or working units they'd like to show or? Uh, I just got my coils assembled yesterday. I haven't got them nano coated yet, but mm -hmm. uh, just put them together yesterday. Okay, I see as Salama has his hand up. Uh, do you want to say something there? Can you unmute Salma or do you, can you hear me? Do you know your hands up? <laughs> do you know where your hands are? Well, you can unmute them. Yep, I can unmute. Does that work? Yes, Salma? yes. Okay. Okay, uh, I got my car running. Woohoo! Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah. Oh. For three days, I run a small fan mm -hmm. to like uh, get the electron vibrate to the coil. Okay. And now, I got big fan. I got uh, lights and a Wi-Fi charger, Wi-Fi uh, connector. 
Mm -hmm. Ooh, weren't we not supposed to be putting those little bricks on on the system? Uh, it's ready three days with a small fan. Are you using any power meters? Uh, yes, only for the in incoming. And how do you know the difference? Uh, at the moment, I only uh, put up the, the big fan and the lights. But the fan, when, the, when I was putting on the fan, the voltage was same. And now it's coming down. Oh, interesting. You, you understand? Yes. Do you use the mechanical, uh, the, 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 well, the, the mechanical power meter or is it an electronic power meter? Do you have a... Uh, digital. I'm using a digital. Digital. Oh. Because I plan to use one at the input and one at the output. I got some yeah. that show you the voltage, amperage, the power and the energy on the same screen. But yeah, because... I, I, my concern was that if that stuff gets nano coated, I don't know if it will work because you know the chips are carbon based. Yeah, in the beginning I had the same problem, but now, but now the the coil wire that comes out is regenerated the the nano coating. The yeah, coil, because... the coil to sample the current. You mean? The, the coil from the coil the way that's come out where you connect the positive and all that the the oh. uh, uh, the capacitor mm -hmm. is all now re re nano coating auto uh, you don't need to put a meter on the output your downstream consumption isn't going to change so yeah, you, can, I, I, you can you can hook everything that you want to hook up meter it get a number and then take that meter completely out of the circuit. You don't even need it anymore. Yeah, if you nope. know if you know what what the load is, it's supposed that you can know the okay, consumption. Yeah, I, I I only do it on the inward. Yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. but that's a, that's that's a problem there because uh, what Mr. Cash mentioned in yesterday's workshop was that if there's going to be a meter, the meter needs to be in between two stacker units. That means you have the power socket, then one stacker unit, then a meter, and then another stacker unit. Because uh, if it's not done in that way, then uh, the, the magraph unit does not work properly. That's what he said yesterday. Yes, so, correct. So, so I, I missed that. So you mean that you need to insert the power meter between coils? No, he said uh, you need to have two stacker units. It means okay you have uh, the power socket stacker unit meter stacker unit and then the load no 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 so no, if... no 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 you understood totally wrong only you know the meter it should be uh, from the grid rest then the Correct. stacker unit and the stacker unit end of the original line not between two stacker units no no what what he was saying is if you want to have a second meter, then there needs to be two stacker units. It means one stacker here, one stacker here, the meter in between. Yeah, okay. Otherwise, yeah. it's just the meter outside. That's yeah, the way Mr. Cash showed it. Do anything. That's the way Mr. Cash showed it in <laughs> the workshop. The process, how we, 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 I, I, don't, I didn't follow that. I didn't follow that. So you need two stacker units, but in case you have only one in series with a hot wire, let's say, it's a, the, Stacker unit in series with the hot wire. Okay, so you have the input, the output, and uh, you said that you cannot put a, at the output. Uh, on the output, you cannot insert a power meter. That's what you're saying. That's right. Right. Uh, yeah, that's right. So where um, you put this? You put only one at the at the input. Yeah. Because right. right. your 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 load. Uh, um, your downstream load is calculated. You know what it's going to be. You don't yeah, have to meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's the problem of inserting anyway? You know, because if you have an energy consumption, you can you can accumulate the count and get a more precise. Not you know, not just the power, instant power, but the, the energy consumption. 
over time. Uh, that's why I, I, I was planning to use also one at the output. So, but well, what would be the problem to insert the one at the downstream, let's say, before the load? Well, on the output, you can plug in uh, uh, an air conditioner, a uh, fridge, a drill, and a cell phone without the charger all in the same plug, and they're all going to work. The voltage output is whatever the device needs. So your meter is going to give you false readings anyway. Well, but... Uh, that oh, is correct. correct. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Very, yeah. Yeah, because you're at the plasma, you are at the plasma level at that point. Right. It's, very, it's very simple. You connect your in your house, you are paying, let's say, $500 a month uh, for electricity bill. Just monitor two months. Your usage is the same in a house. So in two months, you will see if you are losing or you are the same. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But not if you don't want to wait so long, it's like John said, you, you know, you know the, the, the load. So you have an, an idea, a very more or less precise idea what the consumption should be. And that's it, you know, then I you can pay I understand why it's happening like that. Well, because at the output you have a plasma level, so that's the, that's the reason for that. When, when it's nano code, your your wires, you know, just understand, it's like a superconductor. So you don't vibrate anything to move your electricity. Yeah, because the energy won't flow through the copper anymore. So, but the same will happen sooner or later at the input too. Definitely. So it goes. That is correct. So uh, this is the timing, little timing and correct way you know, to build your units and you will see the real results, no matter what. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, but for me it works, you know, at least a couple of days or three days having a, a controlled, a very well-known load and to see if there is any difference, at least 10%. I'm not expecting 90%. Yeah, definitely, but try to understand if you it's, uh, consider if, if it says two kilowatt, try to connect two kilowatt first. If well, but you know, at the beginning, you cannot do that. You need to wait a month or so. It's, it's not a month, it's until you nano code. When you yeah. nano code, then you can, you know, connect more. Because it's did not you, two kilowatt gives you, it gives you more. Yeah, yeah. And did you see, uh, is, is your unit already na start nano coding the load or something like that? You see something in the cable? Where you attach a nano coated from the unit to the regular copper. Uh, one question: Is there any 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 information about how to wrap the copper, the nano coated end of the coil? Is is the same counterclockwise, clockwise to the copper, or is uh, you know indistinct? It doesn't matter. It doesn't what? It doesn't matter. No. Okay. What you do is so you just transfer the energy. Yeah, but when you connect in series, like your stocks are connecting in series. Yeah. You add on. So the same way you when you attach one coil to the other, it doesn't matter how to wrap one cable onto the other, right? It's, it's the same. I do anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise, all of them. Yeah. Yeah, all of them. I do it that way. Okay. But I don't see any any uh, difference between. I don't know. I never tried it actually. That's one. Yeah. Uh, can I can I continue? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, okay. I, I'm doing a single unit. Okay. I'm doing a single unit. I'm pulling uh, the config config number three. Config number three. That means uh, the positive and the positive meet the uh, capacitor. Okay. Uh, so, uh, if there is any way, Armand, that I can, uh, I can check the output. I already now have one spare, one spare. Uh, what you call that? Digital. Uh, uh, what reader can I put anywhere that like uh like what like what you did with uh Alex? Can I do that? I, 
I quite not understood what you said. So please, can you repeat what you what you mean? Alex, when you did Alex, you did the what is, uh, what, is the, what is Alex? Alex, uh, Alex, uh, when he did the beats. Uh -huh, Alex. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So when when you did that, you put the in and out side by side. Okay. Any, any way that we can do that to verify? For the capacitors, you're saying? No, no, not for the capacitor, for the outgoing and the incoming. For the power meters, he means. The, the oh. ones that, to indicate the energy used or whatever. Energy used, you can only put, uh, you know, before, uh, before the grid. Correct. So, uh, like Alex, Alex got uh, one output. Can we do that? One output meaning one output where? Uh, Alex got one input and one output. One in and one out. Okay. Can we do that at any one stage? No, no, no. no. Okay, thank you, thank uh -huh. you. Just uh, don't put the, uh, another unit, another counter or end of the unit. Just, you know, calculate how many watts of energy you're going to connect. If it's uh, 10 watts, 20 watts, 4 watts, it's per kilowatt per hour. So you can calculate that easy. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna... is your, you're going to monitor for a week. You just calculate, okay, I have 5 kilowatt or I have 1 kilowatt or I have 2 kilowatt load in here. In 2 kilowatt load, you monitor, you know, how much energy you consuming and after three weeks how much energy uh, you consume now and you will see the meter it will drop because in yes. meanwhile you're going to nano coat all the wires and all the equipments that you are using because you're already passing the plasmatic energy directioning where to go where is where is the need so i i i need to ask you one question arman Mm -hmm. If supposing now I'm using so much, so much, you know, mm -hmm. incoming, mm -hmm. can I increase that and increase and increase? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to increase. So that I know the the potential of the Definitely. of the coil. Definitely. But Thank I, you. I, I think it means it's nano code, it, you know, it's not going to make a much of a difference. Only on a point when you connect the new device, which has to take energy to nanocode that part, it will. Then it will go back to normal again. Just yes. understand the process, how it's happening and why it's happening that way. Oh. Thank you, right. thank you, Amman. If you're using, a, say, a 250 watt load mm -hmm. and you're measuring kilowatts on your input, um, when you first hook it up, you should be using roughly six kilowatts a day. After three days, it's you're probably not going to be using six kilowatts a day anymore. You'll probably be using four hundred and fifty or five, or four four and a half right. to five kilowatts a day. So at that point, yeah, you yeah, already know be... that your system is is functioning. So you bump that up to five hundred kilowatts, which should bring you up to twelve a day, and your meter will mm -hmm. probably read eleven at that point and then drop from there. So if you're monitoring your meter, um, say every six hours, you write down what the numbers are, you'll be able to watch the trends and they won't, after a short period of time, they won't line up anymore. Correct, Aman, that is my problem now. Uh, process, thank, you. So, you know. thank you for clarifying. <clears throat> yeah, but, but expand different way. You know, if you put the second unit, you already, you know, like infinity loop, you are already connected. So this is the point. If you, you always have to have a two in place, you know, to have a higher, higher, because then you have infinity loop. If you, if you look at it, the connection, if the second one you're gonna connect, is like infinity loop. You close the circuit, so you have infinite energy. One thing that came up, I I'd like to ask you, Armin, um, when they were doing the initial test, they were getting four to six times back into the grid that they were using. Does that apply when you put a second unit mm -hmm. in the system as well? Definitely. So Definitely. the second unit is going to be putting back into yeah. the infinity loop four to six times what it's using, right? Uh, it, it depends on the demand. 
if okay. it's none of his path, you know, all the wires, you know, to the grid, then the path is easy. There is no, everybody is using the energy, but there is no, uh, like, meter is not moving. Yeah. Okay. If you are tapped into the plasma, you can. Just try yeah. it, you will see. Yeah, well, um, I don't think I'm going to be going with two units because I don't no, see I'm not saying that the with, you know, an, an extra 10% of infinity is uh, not really relevant to me. As long as if I've got all the energy I could possibly need, why do I want 10% more? So it's I'm not, not going to worry about that. No, no, you know, you can do a lot of other things. So it's not only, you know, to create more. Well, no, I just, I'm going to be moving as much as I can into uh, the plasmatic usage rather than the electrical usage. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be working on getting devices that work specifically with the plasmatic rather than the, the electron vibration energies. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it's basically unlimited as far as I understand. Right. But if you create in between, that's what you get. Armand, I have another question. Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Yeah. Do you know how it works? Because supposed to, as far as I understood, the, the nano code has a How is it that, you know, the electron vibration starts, you know, the process? Because at the beginning, it will flow not through GANs, but for regular means, right? But since it has like 20 megams, I don't, I don't follow how it, it's like attaching a cable to a plastic or something. No, you just, just you create a, you know, a, like start of the plasma. I, I can hear you. You just need to create a vibration in a plasma. Oh. To it started. Oh. That's okay. why you use the 60 hertz. Uh huh. Mm. So it would flow through the nano coated itself from the beginning. Since yeah, the beginning. 60 hertz. It's just, uh, you know, if you draw the graph, you will understand what you do. Mm. But when, when, when you create already. Uh, you know, plasma, you open a plasma, uh, you're already giving the direction to your cable wires. Yeah, I understand that. But my concern was the, the, the connection between the nanomaterial, which is uh, layering the free plasma, or whatever we want to call it, and, and the matter level, le level, which is uh, the copper wire coming from the, the grid. That was my. Yeah. You, you create a plasma in between two matters because the exit is a matter too and the entry is a matter too. But when you create a plasma, you expand and that expansion gives the nano coating the whole two wirings. Mm. Oh, that's how it starts nano coating the rest. Because when you create it, so your total, your box is uh, plasmatic. Now it's radiates out and in. Interacts with the environment. Then you have a, your direction to do your cable. Yeah, I see. Okay. So the unit basically is taking the energy from the environment and uh, not that from the environment and from direct source, which are the GANs that you glued on it. Uh -huh. Well, the GANs, yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. that, and if we don't put the GANs, uh, you know, it will be a very, you know, small efficiency because... Just understand, understand when you, when you uh, create GANs, it's like direct radiating source, you have it in your jars because it's mm -hmm. individual they have magnetical and gravitational field now you have billions of it 
you have a direct source into your absorption, which is your nanocoated material, which is semiconductor. So when you give a vibration, it goes. It amplifies. Yeah, think of the GANs like the battery of the MagGrav unit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You open up that. Yeah. Yeah, I see. It's the same that we did, or the Philippines did with the, the health pen. At the beginning, it was just a coil, and then added the guns. It makes available that plasma is really available to be absorbed by the nano coating uh, instead of uh, getting it only from the environment, which is much less effective. Is, is that correct? What is it? I, I couldn't understand. Can you repeat that again, please? Yeah, what I say is that the same happened at the beginning with the nano, the, with the health pen. When they started with the health pen, it was just the, 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 the pin, then they add the coils, and finally they add guns over the coils to make available energy. Right. So, you know, the, the, the nano coating could absorb or, you know, take that energy uh, I, I heard, if I'm not wrong, Mr. K is saying that, uh, that in that way, making available that, that plasma, it will be much more effective than expecting for the nano coating to take the energy from the environment. Yeah, but because it's, uh, I understand, you're just adding a small sound, which is radiating stone, you know, and glue it on top of your uh, like nanomaterial. It absorbs everything what's in the environment. But just imagine what the process, what you're doing. So then yeah. it's easier to understand how to do and what to do. Yeah, keep, Rick, in, mind, keep, Rick, in, mind, keep in mind, if you add CO2 GANs to a health pen, um, it becomes very, very powerful, but it will only work on the emotional, the, emotional. The emotional side. It won't work on your knee. Um, yeah. You're adding a filter to that pen. It's no longer a broad band. It's a very narrow band at that point. Mm, interesting. Yes, yes, I remember that. And if you add uh, CHD, it will be energy. If you yeah. add CO, it's matter level, so you will get energy to heal whatever. Yeah. If you add CH3 to your health pen and you keep it in your pocket, you'll just not sleep ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you, uh, again, when you none of, uh, put your GANs, just add a little bit. It's too, too low, please. You, could you speak a little louder? I said, I said your mixture of GANs add a little bit uh, of uh, sugar. So you, you add a mixture of GANs? Yeah. Yeah. For that purpose. Green. Green. Are you there? Rick's asleep. Yeah. Right? Hello, I'm here. Oh, thank, you. thank you, thank you, Arman. Thank you, Arman. Or, 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 you create, or you create your GANs if you do uh, electrical way, you know, uh, instead of salt water or with the salt water. Uh, Armin, you're maybe a Selma. Sorry. It's a, it's a truck on top of you passing by. What was that? If Sorry. If, if, if electrical way, you can, uh, you know, uh, do copper and copper, let's say, uh, and uh, with a low voltage, just instead of salt water, do uh, sugar. Oh. Sweet water. Yeah, uh, Salma, you had something to say, I think. Salma? Hello. Did you have something to say? Rick, uh, I posted a photo in uh, uh, Facebook mm -hmm. under Plasma RAM and under the Chinese uh, Cashy observation. Can can you post that? And then, and, no, can uh, you put the link in? I don't even know what group you're talking about. The, in the what group again? Plasma RAM. Okay. Plasma uh, RAM. Plasma Realm, what's that? That's just a new, uh -huh. one of the new Facebook groups. Okay, I don't know where that is or what that is. Can you put the link in to the chat so we can click on it? 
Okay, I, I'll, I'll try. Uh, I, I won't succeed though. Uh, I, I tried before. I, I couldn't. I couldn't put it in. Can you Maybe next time then. Thank you, Rick. You couldn't put the link into the chat. Yeah, I can't. I, can, I don't have that. Uh, can you see the chat there? Have... They should be able to do yeah, a copy but... and paste into it. I think. Yeah, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Okay, maybe uh, you're on an iPad. And I've got the different. Plasma Realms page up. What What am I looking for? Uh, Salma. The the coil running with the lights. Okay. Second one on the page there. If you can uh, uh, play it, that'd be best. Because if I open my. Uh, you have to kill your my browser. Please? Things can get a little hairy. It's on the edge right now with my CPU. So. I don't have my other computer hooked up right now. It's okay, but uh, uh, one screen share at a time, I think. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, sorry. Let me uh, stop this no one. No worries. And go ahead. There's the picture. Let me make it a little Thanks, bit bigger. Uh, can I make it bigger? Yes, I can. There we go. Do you want to describe it? Yeah, it's just a, a single unit. Uh, the, comp uh, the capacitor is uh, the configuration number three. By single unit. Oh, this is your unit here? Yes, yes. Okay. So the capacitor is uh, configuration number three. What is this blue and white thing out front? Uh, it's the uh, outgoing. Oh, that's just a, like a power bar. Yeah, all right. It's an extension. Oh, okay. And, and uh, you've got the meter coming. here? Yeah, it is the incoming. And this is a 5 watt LED? No, it's a uh, what? What when I bought it, they told me it's a two forty. I'm not so sure though. Okay, oh, okay. just calculate. Just calculate your. Uh, what's the what's your usage? You have to just uh, look under the appliances and see how many watts they are using it. Or you, they, can, you can you can use the watt meter and before starting or connecting it to the set, connect it through the regular grid without any any uh tucker and uh, measure the power that is consuming so that mm -hmm. will be reference without any any calculation so you 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 start all your led uh, fans whatever you have the set and measure the power with a regular grid connection so you have an idea and then you can compare yes thank you thank you all right nice setup uh, the you see the nano coating the nano coating from the from the coil is regenerated. Uh, can you put it back no, up no, there, no. Anja? Hello. The nano coating from the coil is regenerated. Can yes. you uh, it, share it again, John? Uh, I gotta bring that back up. There we go. Okay. So you, are you speaking from of this the, right here? From the unit, the, the wire that comes out. This wire here? Unit, yeah, from the from the from the unit. From okay. the unit where, where where you attach the positive incoming or outgoing? Yeah. It's all nano coated, re re nano coated. When I twist it, it came off. Then it, after running, it regenerate. Oh, okay. And uh, why it came out, or which way you did your nano coating? Caustic or heated? Uh, my nano caustic is a bit uh, not so good now. Okay. No, but, what I'm saying, how your so, nano. So when I connect, I saw it coming off from the wire. Okay, 
Asman, which I way, know. which way you nanocoated it? By the uh, I use a steamer and I use the hot caustic. Okay. Okay. Thanks. That shouldn't have come off. That should have been a really nice coating. Yeah, it shouldn't come off. I never seen nanocoating come off. When I do my plate, when I, I try to clean the coating off my plates to recoat them, uh, this stuff is hard like diamond. It takes me forever to to grind it, it off. Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most most likely you use uh what potassium? Uh no, I use sodium hydroxide. No, I use sodium hydroxide too, but the liquid one, not the powder. Oh, okay. Yeah, so no, it's not as good. Use the powder. Use the powder, that's why. Yeah, I, I can't get powder from, from here. Why? Where no. are you? Uh, I'm in Singapore. Oh, Singapore. Oh, hello, um, hello Singaporean. Vivek, hello, you got Vivek. powder, don't you? Hello, Vivek. Hello, Salma. We are both in Singapore. Yeah, correct. Okay, wait. Uh, I will, I will let, me, let me check out the... the the caustic that I'm using, it is in a powder form. I can show on the camera. Hang on. Okay. And you don't have to be right in your mic, Vivek. We can <laughs> we can hear you well. Yeah, sorry about that because I can't hear myself. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Uh, do you go to a specific shop to get that? Yeah, it's in uh, Tanjong Paga. There's a uh, there's a hardware shop called Peter and Sam DIY. So if you go there, uh, you ask him for sodium hydroxide drain cleaner. He will show you this one. Tell him you want the powder type. Okay, okay. the brand is uh, the brand is Tong Liao, T O N G L I A O. Okay. Okay, this okay. Uh, what was the name of the shop? Uh, Peter and Sam DIY. Tanjung Paga, you said? Tanjung Paga Plaza. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, there's only one issue with this one because it's not pure sodium hydroxide. There is a surfactant inside here, there's a soap powder inside here. So, what you need to do is use a very fine sieve. And then pour this into the sieve and uh, shake the sieve until the sodium hydroxide falls out. What will be left inside the sieve will be only the, the soap powder. And then you will have, uh, you, you can do your nano coating uh, and, and it's fine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, there, there's another way that is in the Facebook. The, uh, what they did was use a cro crock pot. Yeah, that works too. It, I, it seems to work, you know. It, it keeps the temperature up for extended periods of time. And uh, that's how we're going to be doing our coils here in Canada. Uh, my landlord, we went to the secondhand store and we bought a $6 crock pot. And that's <laughs> how we're going to be co coating our coils. Yeah. Another thing that helps, because I don't have the powder. One thing that helped me is pine oil. What would that? Why would that help? It becomes uh, uh, black and shiny. That doesn't mean it's a nano coating. No, no, no. You you add it up to your to your uh, sodium hydroxide. Just just a little bit, though. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, if, but if you want uh, uh, it, like me, I don't have a powder, I don't have the flake. So I use the pine oil to make it better looking. Well, I, 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 what it looks like isn't going to change how well it works. I mean, you want it to work properly. Yeah, and... see, uh, pine oil, you just, you just think of it as a lie, just like lie, where some, some people add lie. Yep. Because of the well, lie is sodium lie is sodium hydroxide. So it's the same stuff. I take it I take it like pine is also lie. 
Um, pine oil isn't lye. No, it's not. It's not? But no. it works. It, it works for me, though. Well, your coatings are coming off, so apparently it's not, not working. Because <laughs> when I do my yeah, coating, because... like I say, copper plates, the coating on my copper plates is so hard, I have to work for hours to get that code John you don't know how I I am envy of you you know I try so many things to get my nano code uh, just get the and, just get the caustic uh, powder just, just plain nano or caustic powder lye is the same thing if you go if there's people making soap in your area they will have lye powder it's the same stuff just lye powder and distilled water. That's all I use. You recommend that? Yes. It's this. It's it's lye is sodium hydroxide. Yeah. It's just yeah. another name for it. Thank you, John. <clears throat> and and the simpler the better. Take your time. Go slow. Fast. And make sure your copper, you got a high quality copper and it's really clean when you start and you will not have problems. Work. Armin. Don't add extra stuff. That yeah. Sorry, guys. May I ask something about the GANS? The GANS production? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's your experience, uh, Armin, with the GANS? Because I heard Mr. Kesh uh, answering a question. Uh, from this, uh, from Austria, I think, and he was uh, explaining another method to uh, get guns uh, in not a regular way uh, with a CO2 kit, let's say, uh, but it was using some low voltage uh, battery, and I didn't follow exactly what was the method. Do, do you know something about that? Yes. Oh. I done it. It's the same thing that you connect uh, low voltage. From where to where? Like you have a, a you know, you connect the low voltage to your plate. You produce gas too. So between the zinc and the copper, the, the nanocoated copper, you mm -hmm. connect the battery and... Uh... Not even battery, you can connect, uh, yeah, you can connect batteries. Like one, uh, you use you use some uh, resistor to limit the current, or just a three volt battery, for example, and and that's it. I I, I don't use battery, but but I use a power unit that I have, so I connect very uh, low voltage. The the power unit. Yeah. What what power unit? The voltage unit. Voltage in um, uh, you know. So. 35 watts unit that I have. Oh, the, well, it's a power supply coming yeah. from the grid. Right. A variable. Oh, I see. And you use, uh, uh, you, you, you put just straight three volts or how much? Most people uh, aren't using more yeah. than two volts, actually. Yeah, but, but it's, it's one and a half. You know, release. But if you do it slowly. If someone will, were to use more than one and a half or two volts, it becomes black. Become black, what, the, 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 the gas? Again, again, become black very fast. If you use more than two volts, you say? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I one time I tried with six volts and it become black. Oh. Uh, the reaction is too fast. I did a CO2 once with a 19 and a half volt computer power supply and it was insanely fast. It only took 15 minutes to fill up the container. Uh, um, but it's not a very high quality. Begins. Maybe it's a mix of another reaction, but John, it's what it was you that was uh, coating the the the, the nano coated copper with uh, this uh, uh, water protection for for boots or something. It was you or another person? I don't remember. Somebody uh, was. I was the first one to bring it up in the workshop, and uh, I do that quite regularly. I'll coat my uh, zinc plates and my nano copper plates with. Uh, um, a silicon spray, but it's designed for cloth. 
and uh, uh, the, 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 my zinc and my copper last a long time. I haven't, I haven't had uh, nano coating come off of my copper yet. Oh, that's interesting because, you know, the problem is always the, the black residue or the consumption, the fast consumption of the nano coating, and you need to re recode it. So it's working anyway because Mr. Cash was saying that also you can use uh, the, nano, the, the, the plates outside the canister. Uh, but, you know, somebody reports that you can make ants, but it will be too slow. It will take it a is. long it's, time. It's very, very slow. And uh, another thing to keep in mind, um, if you're going to be coating your plates with silicone, the batteries probably won't work. You need to ah, use a nano copper wire between your plates, and then it works really, really good. And see, let me see if I follow that. That was my next question, because if you isolate the plates, there is no current flow. Okay. So you use a, instead of the battery, use a, a, a piece of nano coated copper wire? Uh, yep, that you that works really good. Um, also, I would I would think I haven't tried it, but uh, just from the way I understand it, if you were to put one of Alex's beads between the plates with a nano copper nano coated wire to connect it, um, you're going to get really good results. Well, that Vince said, yeah, Vince uh, report that is uh, very good and fast that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you insert the uh, uh, Alex uh, cell between the and you, 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 you coat with the, this uh, silicone spray, both plates, thin plate and the nano-coated one, right? Yes. The first time I did it, I didn't coat the plates and my zinc disappeared in about three days. And uh, I immediately looked at the, the container and I could, I could almost smell the zinc in it. And uh, I knew that what I did wasn't right. So the next time I did it, I coated both plates with the silicone and uh, my GANs came out beautiful, white, fluffy, just like it's supposed to. And you, if you compare with the regular GANs, you can tell that it's exactly the same as CO2 GANs? Well, I didn't put it through a gas chromatograph or anything like no. that. It's just a visual Absolutely. visual yeah. inspection. But uh, the, the, the zinc oxide looks a little bit different. Um, the, the, the CO2 GANs looks like clouds. It looks like a cloud in the sky floating in the water, and the zinc oh. oxide is just a goo that sticks at the bottom of your container. And when you dry it, you get the same result. You get the so you get more quantity in less time that way, right? Well, you get a higher quality GANs, not a quantity, but a quality. And and um, with, with the stuff we're using, we're not using that much, so you don't need gallons of this stuff. And especially if you're using it for health devices, you don't even use the GANs, you use the water you wash the GANs with for your health devices. And that works just fine because um, the health devices, you want them to degrade over time and, and eventually it's not gonna work anymore because the water will release that energy. It won't store it for extended periods of time. Um, so you, and because if you, if you just, if you make up a, a, a simple pad with a, a paper towel in a baggie, in about three weeks, it'll start to mold and you'll get black spots and weird things happen in it and it just looks disgusting and you want to throw it out. So don't waste your GANs on that. Use, just use the water for the GANs. For the uh, devices, for the, uh, if you're making a, a, a specific pen or your, um, your re reactors, then you're only using a little bit. You're only using a couple of milliliters of GANs total for the whole thing. In what, except, in for the, the, except for the, the center batch. beads, of course, but I'm the coating of the, the, the nano coating. So you don't need that much. You only need, uh, you know, half a cup is plenty. Well, you know, but, you know, you will always need guns for everything. So my plan is to do, even if I don't need it, to keep doing because it takes time, several days. How long it took for you to get some reasonable amount of guns? Uh uh, the, the, the best results I had, I made a large container and I used a big piece of copper and a big piece of zinc. And I got, I would say a cup and a half, maybe almost two cups in about six days. That's, that's good. That's good. And when uh, you say large container, how, what size are you talking about? Um, I don't only know inches. It's a, uh, uh, six more inches wide, 10, long, three inches deep. Oh, so, okay. Two and a half liters, three liters. 
Can I ask a question? Anybody Go can ahead. confirm the seawater is CO2? No. I have two it's gallons good. ready to make gas with seawater. <laughs> the seawater is a mixture of all kinds of stuff. We're not even sure if it's GANs or not. But I but heard the, this case saying that we need a lot of different kind of cans mixed together. That's why they were somebody was using, or more than one was using uh, sea, sea salt, uh, I mean uh, sea water, because you get a mixture of different cans, not CO2. Well, okay, then can. sea water is, can, can, can get, we can get uh, GANs out of sea water, but it's not CO2, correct? Exactly, yeah, it's supposed to be a mixture. Maybe part of it is CO2, but you get several other components on the seawater uh, that will, you know, deposit other kind of cans and who knows what. And you might wind up with a situation like the one fellow who was trying it broke uh, mercury gans, it, 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 doctor. It, it, and the thing that, that came to my mind was if you make the gans it is breaking generally. of mercury pounding out into your room and do you really want to be in a cloud of uh john you're breaking up come in john come in john we can't uh, hear you. Kalma, very quickly, can you please check your chat? I sent you a message over there. Thank you. Hey, guys, I've been running my system for about six days now. Um, three days, I ran it directly to a, a capacitor uh, that was running from AC, and then it had a DC charger and then plugged into the wall. It ran perfectly for three days, and um, and I didn't even have to unplug it at all, and my capacitor kept going, so it was pretty awesome. And then after the three days, I then plugged it into the wall yesterday and it's working great. And uh, I'm getting that like ionized smell, you know, and taste in the air when you go near the unit. So do you get that taste on your tongue and then that sort of smell and fresh morning mist air around it? I don't know if you guys have experienced that at all yet, but I'm just thought I'd share that with you. And then uh, something interesting I did with the coating of my springs, <clears throat> I used different caustic layers. So I mixed GANs in with the caustic, uh, but different types of GANSes. And then I sprayed them on separately every three hours to create different layers to, to get that sort of gradient effect that we've, we're all chasing. And um, it seems to work quite well. So um, it has a different coat each time after a few hours. And then you, know, you put a different GANS in with a different caustic. And I added, you know, KOH, NOH, um, and then CO2, um, CUO GANS is all mixed in. And it's sort of like a, a mix pot each time I spray it. And I did that and I'll do that on my next, next set as well. So I just thought I'd share you with that guys. And then a few hours ago, I noticed um, um, that's sort of like a, a strange surge in this whole room. I've got a lot of my computers and TVs in here. And I've never had that surge before. It was sort of like a, a release type surge. So I don't know if that's related to the unit, but that's my guess. And uh, it was a strange feeling. So I just thought I'd share that as well. Mm, very good, thank you. And um, where, where are you from? It's uh, Leith, is it Leith? Yeah, yeah, originally I'm from Australia, but my rest of my family's English and now I live here in Canada. So work that one out. Okay, where do you live in Canada? <laughs> I used to live in East Souk, so probably near you, Rick, but now I moved oh. to Colwood, Colwood because my son goes to school here. Oh, jeez. So, uh, yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. You're yeah. quite nearby. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> right on. Thank you for... Oh, one, uh, one last thing I thought I'd share with you guys. I've been experimenting on my truck for three months now, putting on all the different wires and GANs and different things, and... Um, I noticed, I don't know, with Toyota, I've taken it to them twice now, um, I get the ECU uh, light comes on, like the engine computer unit, and it goes into sort of an automatic limp mode, and you have to take it to Toyota, and they have to analyze it for the type of code and what the remedy is, and every time I take it in there, they just do a software upgrade, <laughs> and uh, they have no resolution for it, so it's got to be related to the plasma that's, that's been released, because I noticed... But, but the computer, it's working, or...? It works for a while and then it 
comes on again and then it goes off in about a week and then it'll come back on again so i've just i just ignore it but um it doesn't let me go out of four low and it has all the lights flashing like you know i need to take it in but it drives fine and did, 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 did you check the cables or inside the unit uh to see if there is any another coated there I, I, it's all sealed up, you know, the Toyotas are all sealed up. I didn't want to mess with it because I'm still under extended warranty. Um, you know, I read the forums and they say to check the sensors. So I clean the sensors, you know, the air, airflow sensors and things like that. But it's to this point, I've just sort of said, I've just, you know, shaken my hands from it and saying it's all plasma related, you know, unless I can go get a cheap bunker and experiment on that. But, but right now I've just accepted what it is and, uh, you know, hopefully the lights will go away. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. what year is it? It's a 2008. Okay. So, um, check yeah. the battery terminals too. Sometimes they can be corroded, even though they look good, and not making a correct connection. No, they're all fine. It's um, reading the Toyota forums. They say it's usually you know the sensors they're messing mm -hmm. with the sensors and telling the uh, engine computer unit that there's something wrong. Um, so a lot of people just disconnect the sensors, you know, but then you're, you're breaching the EPA and the, the climate control rules, right? If you do that. So I'm not going to start messing with that. Yeah, for, for how long yeah. you have uh, installed the system now? Oh, I've had the spring since June, July, but I've had a different variety with different strengths, you know, experimenting. Um, but, but one set's been on there permanently. I've added additional ones. I've put like water bottles infused with GANs around it. I've put <laughs> gas and, you know, petrol with infused CO2 GANs in the fuel tank. I've done a bunch of things. <laughs> and you, uh, you notice something, <laughs> something different. You can tell some experience you notice. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I felt high when I was driving along sometimes, you know, I felt like I was relaxed <laughs> on vacation somewhere sunny, but, but the truck's really high. It looks high right at the back, but I've measured the clearance and it's still the same, but it's really high off the ground. And uh, it feels like, yeah, you're gliding along. Right. And sometimes it moves and you haven't even put your foot on the accelerator. So it's a pretty weird feeling. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So it's like uh, the one that I think it was Alex that reported that you, uh, it, it, it feels like you are driving on a rail or something. Did you feel the same? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Sort of that gliding feeling, right? You know, that's sort of, uh, it's a different, and you got the different speed and the engine's super quiet. You could barely hear the engine. Like I turn all the, the radio and stereo off and I can barely hear the engine now. So. Yeah. And what about the consumption? It's it's too subjective. You know, I try to measure it. It's 10 to 15% on best, but, I, you know, I barely drive. I drive like to the, to the health club and to the shops and that's it because I work from home, so I barely drive. Uh -huh. So I can't really gauge it on consumption. I'm just going based on how it runs right now. But so. What kind of coils do you have? Whew, a variety of coils. Um, I did the original about eight inch wires on each of them. Um, I've experimented with- You have, 12, you have 12. coils that we use on, in a blueprint? No, um, I used, going back three or four months ago, Armin, when we originally, discussions back in you know, Alex time, the 65th or 66th workshop, I can't remember exactly, but as soon as it was discussed, and then I started experimenting with different wires, um, and then I made some special ones that look like a... That's gonna, that's gonna work. They try to understand, you know, the coiling and extent. Yeah. But we know what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, the bottom line is, is, you know, I don't want to mess with it anymore because of the computer stuff, you know, I think I've done enough with it, you know, I've had a lot of time to nanocode everything and I can see the physical effects, but to, to go any further, I'd pretty much have to start disconnecting components in the truck and I'm just not willing to do that right now, you know, because it's transport and if I had a cheap car, I'd do it, but not an expensive truck I need to get around in. So. But yeah, I just thought I'd share that with everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. I need to kind of wrap things up here, guys, because um, I need to get prepared for a teaching session and so on coming up. Um, any last minute comments or? Uh, just one very quick one. Oh, my, I saw that you dropped out. Could you please uh, check your chat window? I sent you a message there. Thank you. Yeah, I have a last question for, for John. John? For John. John, you there? Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Both buttons were muted. <laughs> yeah. John, uh, you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah. When you said that you uh, you use your place for the guns production and you train it with a nano coated wire, right? That's the best option. So isolate the plates with, uh, with silicon and then join them with a nano coated copper wire. The, do you use some limitation like a LED in the middle or something or just the, the copper wire and that's it? Hello? John, you copy? Uh, I think he had a, maybe he's having trouble with his internet there. Can't hear you, John. Not sure if you're trying to talk right now. Okay, well, that's not working. <laughs> okay, we'll have to wrap up on that one, I think. Anything else as a last minute comment? All right, well, thank you everybody for coming by this evening and uh, enlightening us with your various things. Oh, I see that uh, the Zoom has disconnected. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to end the broadcast for tonight. It's time. So that's it for the Cash Plasma Reactor Group for Tuesday, November 10th, 2015. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Bye for now.